Well hello there everyone, welcome to the YouTube video here on the channel. I'm trying to knock my AC off, I do apologise for the fan noise there. I didn't notice that that was still running. I hope you guys are doing really well. Today we are at Helensborough Upper on the Suburban Glasgow route by River Games. I'm going to be driving from here at Helensborough through to Glasgow Queen Street on one Yankee 4-4. Four -four. The, the, the 1140 Fort William and Oban to Glasgow Queen Street service. This train will be taking it from Helensborough Upper, to Barton Central, Dalmieu, and finally Glasgow Queen Street, a total distance of around 25 miles. What we'll do is we'll head into the cab of the 156. It's largely set up already because we've worked it through from um, Oban, is the front portion. And at the moment, we're basically just waiting for the, the off here, which is about a, about a minute and a half's time. The 156, I believe, has is a, a unit I have driven before on the channel. If not, basic features of the low cut of the train. We've got a throttle, sorry, a speedometer, a brake cylinder pressure indicator, main reservoir indicator. We've got a, spe uh, a seven notch speed controller, master switch, which is your direction control switch, forward, reverse, and then I move it reverse again and it goes to off. I'll leave it in neutral for now. Um, you've got your DS, your, your signal buzzer which doesn't work because the doors are open door open switches gearbox fault lights engine start stops three step reverts three step brake sorry the dra um, and then you've got your light control switches and you can press the speed up uh, you've got the gsmr for role play purposes this is one of the first like because you fit with gsmr is the era, era this scenario is designed around 2005 but yeah Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so 156 are limited to maximum speed of 75 miles per hour. Don't worry, we won't get anywhere near that speed today. We've got close, we get a 60. You can see, like I say, this is a double 156 for driving today, so a four car unit. The reason being, the front portion of the train starts its day in Oban, and, and then the rear portion of the train comes down from, from Fort William and joins to the rear of the train. Okay, put the right away. Let's go places. So I'm going to go to notch three, notch four power, and we're just going to accelerate to 40 miles now. The line speed is technically 45. However, 40 is our start speed limit. It's also worth pointing out, obviously, our RTB isn't simulated, but we would need to return the token before leaving the station. So at 15, like I said, speed builds, and we are descending a hill. We basically are descending down to the left of the Clyde, and you can see that's the Clyde over there. So it's quite a, a, a steep descent to get down there. And power off and step one break so just go into step one and uh, let the speed drift back down to 35 and then back up to and then basically when it gets down to 35 let it drift back up to 40 and reverse so that's basically the plan for the descent down to the line uh, the what happens is we join the line from Helensborough Central um, about sort of two three miles after the after Helensborough Central itself uh, no, about, no, about two miles um, and then uh, we follow that all the way so we, we follow that and that's the line into Glasgow basically but um, yeah it's a, it's a 40 limit like I say until we get down there this train must be on heck of a shift for the drivers um, the, the, you know, the guards it, it's a lot of stops but you know the, the units aren't that big, so there's not that much to do. But the, uh, well, comparatively speaking, but the, um, you know, this route is incredibly hilly, and there's a lot of speed changes on it. Well, the, the West Highland line, that is. So this train obviously goes up towards Fort William behind us. Other line goes up to Fort William behind us, and it is incredibly hilly. We must be one heck of a shift to, uh, to, to drive that. I think that they, uh, they lodge a crew overnight that brings it back down so 
Yeah, I'm just lapping the, uh, the speed coast up and down a little. So yes, the uh, like I say, we uh, like I say, because I've driven this three times now, I've actually got an understanding of the speed limit for this service for the route and the stopping pattern. I'd probably struggle if I was to be given like a commuter unit and sort of drive that well, but I've got an idea of where the speed changes are and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, okay, there's the 35. So I'll let the brake off again. And we're just coasting way down the hill here. You can hear we're not getting any AWS dings because the AWS ramps are set for trains going the other way. As such, they, uh, we, we get the cancellation of it, and we just don't get the uh, we don't get any uh, we get no dings basically, no ding dongs. Single amber, which is fine. We know about it. That is an incorrect signal as far as I'm aware. And we'll just drift down ahead. And you can see we now join the double track. Technically, I guess we do diverge, but that should be a green with the feather, in my opinion, because there's no line speed change when we diverge here. If it's some line speed change more than 10 miles an hour, that's when you get the uh, the amber aspect with a with, with a feather. Okay, it's cautioning you of the speed change. So go idle, not just three, just for now. Now it's just to help us maintain the speed, and it also means that the gearbox remains pressurized. Um, so the Class 156s or the, the Sprinter family in general have hydraulic gearboxes. As such, if you ever hear a Sprinter pull away, you hear the engine rev, and then uh, you've got about a two second lag before the train actually moves as a result of that. So there's the AWS ramp. We're now cleared up to 60, so I go full power. And there's the roar of the engine. We're going to get up to 60 and then coast so on um yeah so it's been a bit of a crazy weird day for me um i uh, literally got up this morning went into work so i promised to call a customer i wasn't supposed to even be in today but i was like your story resonates with me i want to make sure we can get you what get you where you're going and of course i was told the re the reservations because the strike action's just been announced well the uh, the current level four it's just been announced i should say um, and uh, I was like, your story resonates with me. I will come to work specially to, to, to call you and get you sorted. Of course, the system hadn't been loaded, it hadn't been loaded in the system, and literally 10 minutes after I got on the bus home, you guessed it. It was loaded on the system, and yeah. Ooh. And AP's just announced the external variations of the Class 86, 87 pack. No, I'm getting too quick, so I'm going to go off the power and start the train coast. So you can see we are just following the Clyde along here. This is the current ScotRail timetable, by the way, that is installed on the route. Well, not installed, but this scenario is modelled around. And, yeah. Headache and it makes your nose hurt. Yeah, that's what I've got now. Mm. 
do a bit of power on just to let us keep, let us stay moving basically um, and uh, just keep rolling a notch of power on just to keep us moving so yes sorry my brain is just struggling a little and a lot today I hope you guys are doing well like I say it's uh, just been a bit of a bit of a period really bit of a period like I say with with my um, sort of current work it's just been really busy with obviously the the, the industrial action and I'm working with uh, I'm trying to think what I've talked about and what I haven't talked about. Oh, well, 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 well. Um, we've had the. Um, I saw this, to be honest. I'm, I'm in rail in a game, and I'm talking about industrial action. This feels a bit, a bit too realistic, if I'm honest. But um, yeah, the uh, like I say, I was. Um, Yeah, I've had a, a tough time with, with some of the stuff that's been going on. And, and obviously we had the heat wave, which melted level crossing. Yes, you heard right, it melted level crossing. It was so, well, it, okay, it didn't melt level crossing. It caught fire, which then melted level crossing. Lol. And that then caused us to have a, um, have literally, I think, uh-oh. Of a day where there, there were 48 hours of delays to the trains from my train operating company that day, which is just ridiculous. Now is a great moment to point out that if you have to figure out who it is that I do work for, all opinions are my own and may or may not be those of my employer. So we need to be at a 30 exiting this tunnel, so I'm just going to take a step to break application now as we get into the tunnel. And we should be well down to 30 by the time we exit. So the, uh, it's Del Roque, Del, Del Roque, Del Roque, I can't, remember, I can't pronounce it, I'll point out, I'll show you the, the, the place, the sign as we go past, that we go past first before we then uh, approach um, uh, Del Mio, which is our first stop. And we sit there for quite a while actually, um, because we can run well ahead of our timetable. I think we are time this, this path is probably set to follow a very slow stopping service, but I've looked and I can't actually, you know, there's no trains that are supposed to be ahead of us dur during the current timetable. So I think they've just not retimed really this path since um, the timetable change. And I do apologise, I'm just not able to get a, um, a, a 2005 period accurate timetable for the route because I don't have access to them, simple as. And as much as I love doing realistic videos, no, I don't need to slow down so further. Like, I love doing accurate videos, I draw the line at that. So, Del Roque, Del Roche, I'm not really sure. And you see, we're not doing it in Barton Central for four minutes. So we are really early. I don't really need to accelerate. I can just approach over the, the bridge here, which, again, is one of the parts of this route I remember from it being a freeway route days. So the, um, the stop markers in this station are deceivingly early, so I'm going to slow down and get myself nice and slow for the approach, because I've always missed them, and I'm determined not to do that this time. So this is how... Um, some of the, the EME, modern EMU drivers drive. And I can't do step one brake. I'm not slowing down fast enough for me. There's my three. There's my three and six. After I want to aim to stop. I'm aiming to stop, so I put most of the screens in my window. Oh, 
That'll do. There you have it. So that is us at Dunbarton Central. I'm going to do a pause and I'll come back when we are ready to depart. And it is time for us to go places. All right, let's do this. Let's get out of here. Hello. So the start speed limit is 440 miles per hour. Oh, yeah, it's just Facebook's not telling me about things late. Yeah, the Class 87 external variation stuff was announced today. So, we are now going to be calling our next stop of Dalmuir, which is our st which to which is about six and a half-ish miles away, I believe. Um, and our start speed is 40, 40 miles per hour. 40. Full power up to 40. You can see there's our 40 there. And then we'll hit 40 and just idle it and coast. Forty. So there is a um, documentary that was done about, um, I'm sure going to have to watch, I think, which was done about the company I now work for, um, well, in a previous guise. Uh, but obviously a lot of the staff have remained, and I think I'm going to have to watch that and just see who are, see if I recognise anyone from it. So there's guys who've been there for a while. It just, I literally, I, I, get, I do get distracted quite easily, I'll be honest. Um... Yeah, like I say, I get distracted quite easily, so um, I just thought I should give that a view, shouldn't I, really? So there's a 60 limit, I believe it's just after this curve. It's not actually signposted, see, we've already gone through it. And I do not believe I saw a signpost! Yeah, there's, there's one for the other way, but not one for us, I don't believe. I may, yep, there's no signpost for our route, so that's not on me at that point. So we'll ham I will st I'll st I'll hammer, 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 <laughs> I'll put my teeth back in my mouth and I'll throw it up to, uh, to 60 and then we'll keep it there. So again, we are just hammering along the, uh, the side of the, the, uh, the Clyde. This is all sort of navigable stretches of water, which is quite cool. May actually be a problem because I have to leave the house in 20 minutes. But actually, we're about. Let's check the timings on this one. So I just realised I need to leave the house. I may do a, a, a seamless jump cut. Bring our speed down to 55. 55. Off. Let's go Queen Street. A week in the future. Actually, it's. Now we'll do Fort Wallace. Yeah, Fort William. 11.40. We could get it to Glasgow for 15.34. So, mm, marginal. Let's check the 
of times. Yeah, so I've got about 30 minutes. No, I've not got time for that. Well, well I, I about to do, but like, I'll be late to where I need to be, so no, I'm not doing it. So yeah, but so the, the full stopping pattern for this train, for those of you wondering, it, it, so is Fort William, Spain Bridge, Roy Bridge, Tulloch, Carrow, Rannoch, Bridge of Orkey, Upper Tindrum, Crean Larrack, Ard Louis, Arakar and Tarbot, Garlic Head, and Helensburg Upper. And that takes back, sorry, Helensburg Upper, Dunbarton Central, Dalmier. We are back up to 60 after the curve. I do apologise for not pointing that one at Dalmier and Glasgow Queen Street. Total journey time of around four hours. Which is just a long turn on one of these. Just a long turn of duty. <laughs> duty. So I suppose with a minimal turnaround time you could just about work a train from Glasgow to Fort William and back in a day. I may put myself through that one day, who knows. Come to Glasgow the night before, stay overnight in Glasgow. Dream on a Scott Rail up to uh, up to Fort William. Just just to enjoy the route. And then come back on it again. Do I like 156s that much? <laughs> I've not actually been on the Saltair refurbished ones, so I'm not sure how good they are. If they have metro seats, then I refuse, but we'll see. So yeah, it's, uh, like I say, it's a little bit of a distance from Fort William, so from, um, from, yeah, it is a bit of a distance from Fort William to, to Dambio, but it is, you know, it's, even though it's a little bit less of a distance, it still is, you know, a bit of a journey uh, that we're on now to get ourselves, you know, all the way down to, uh, down to Glasgow. Yeah, that station in particular isn't. No, I, I, see, the it's again, it's weird that, like, again, I. Oh, actually, so I do apologise. It's down here. I'm, I'm thinking of a reference point further down the line. Brought myself back in the room. So, those flats are near Dalmia Station. Hello. Wait to the 314. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just keeping a good eye out. I've got my speed sign there. So, what I can do is just go notch one. Of break, bring us down to about 40 45 uh, to pass that signal out, and then that'll be me in a really comfortable position to stop at uh, at Dalmio Station. So, this is the turn back siding at uh, Dalmio. So basically the, you do get a unit that comes, uh, sorry, a train that comes from here, from Motherwell up to here, and it goes into those sidings and then reverses back towards uh, Motherwell. Goes across the Clyde. That is my three car markers, and I'm stopping at the end here, which is completely fine. On the six car stop, I can probably stop a little short of it and be fine, but I know I can. There we go. And welcome to Dalmia.
Alrighty, the doors have just closed. There we go. Time for our array. Break off. Reverse is forward. Not just three. So our start speed limit after Dun uh, after Dalmuir is sixty miles per hour. So I hope you guys have had a fabulous day. Mine has actually been really cool. So um, I'd literally just pause the video um, recording when we reached Dalmuir there because I realised I was out of time and I had to go to Pride. I know. And uh, Pride was great, thank you for asking. Um, and yeah, I am now very tired. It was a long, it was a long ass day. Um, but yeah, cause basically I, uh, for context, I start this recording at about, oh, I finished, I paused the recording at quarter past 11, it's now 20 to 8 at night. So it just gives you an idea of the time scales. Uh, so I've got no idea what I was talking about before we stopped at Dalmio. I don't think I was actually talking about anything, which is a good thing. And I could have made this rather more, more so seamless. However, I was being bad at doing a YouTubing. So, any hoozle. I hope you guys have had a... Uh, like I say, had a fabulous day. Let me know if, you, if there's anything I can do to make your day any better. We're going up to 40, that is, for zero miles per hour. So we're crashing for 60, uh, 60 zero miles per hour. I'm not paying really attention to the world right now, and I'm not drunk, I do promise that much. Um, but the, uh, yeah, we're just cruising on our way towards uh, Glasgow Queen Street. It's about 10, 10 or so miles. So, um, yeah. Yeah, as you can see, looking down at the uh, speedo, we are just like that speed build until we reach a uh, a decent pace, and then yeah. So it looks like um, class eighty seven is coming soon. There's an eighty seven class eighty seven screenshot been posted, which is nice, which is nice indeed. So you can use the train effects to set up your destination blinds. Power off. Wonderful brake rub sound, which I really like actually. Um, so we're just staying at 60. Um, and what we're doing is we're just going to be, uh, our next sort of breaking point of interest is going to be on the right, we're going to sit on the right hand side, I believe it's actually going to be coming off this curve here is going to be a green aspect with a feather and as soon as we sight that we need to start slowing down towards 33.0 miles per hour so I think it is judging from the visuals I believe it is this curve I'll just keep my speed up a little bit longer and then uh, yeah or if nope my bad it'll be the next set of curves So we're actually already at 55. What I can do is just, like I say, one notch three in. Yeah, I've just seen the green with the feather there. I mainly saw the feather and then the green next to it. But what I'll do is just knock my power off. And then notch one of power. Then notch one to break. Actually kind of kick it up to notch two, because I need to be down to 30 for the crossover. I'll use notch two to forty, and then go to, to a notch one. So I step one from there. It's that speed post ahead of us. I need to be at thirty-four. There, thirty. Speed, speed check. Eye out the window. 
and arcing over. what I'll do is I'll put the speed back on so that the uh, line speed does actually increase passing here I go, well it's technically one of 60 now but I'm going to go to 40 which works for me so you can hear what I mentioned earlier about the rev and then the power increases and that's what you're just seeing there so yeah hopefully you guys had a fantabulous day there's our 60 post yeah, that'll be fine. We can just keep accelerating it back up to 60. So basically our next thing to note, look out for is a 15 motors board. And we want to be at a 15 at the end of this second station. So basically what I'm going to do is cite the first station and then give it a, you know, a couple of beats and then slow down from there. That's the thinking. Let's see how it goes. So I'm just letting the uh, the power build, power build, get our lines, get us up to the 60 mile an hour line speed, and then coast. I've got to say, I do like driving along these lonely routes. It's just it feels very different to the east coast, which is all, you know, all the passenger routes on the east coast are pretty much electrified, and it does just feel different when you get away from the wires and, you know. Curiously, this next speed change has two AWS ramps in front of it, which does lead me to believe that there's an error there somewhere. Oh, 16. Oh, power again. So they are talking about getting Viva stock D trains for this route, which would be really interesting, actually, if they could make that work. Um, of course, we have recently did, driven the D-Train on the Isle of Wight route. I'm going to be doing a proper route learner of that in due course. I do apologise once again. Mm. Water in the fan right now, it's all turning off. I've got an AC, uh, AC unit which just keeps me sort of cool and collected during my videos, but... This, I believe, was Puzzle. Postland Park. So just to give you an idea, this is sort of a slightly more so historic route. So you can see we are at, I believe, Gillick's Head here. Yep, Gillick's Hill, sorry. Gillick's Hill, Postal Park. So it's basically Postal Park House, we've got the AWS ramp out about here, the speed changes there. So just something to bear in mind. Ding! Frickin' ding over here, frickin' ding over there, ding, ding, ding. So, believe it or not, there are three noises AWS ramp can make, or an AWS horn can make when it goes off, or an AWS system can make, I guess. You've got the ding, which indicates the clear aspect. You've got the ding, which is, um, which you've got the horn one, which indicates, basically, a signal of caution, and there's an alternative horn, which is a kick, pull, a kick plate on the actual train. So there'll be a, uh, on, I don't know what it is on these, but on a zoomers, there's like a little kick thing there, that you kick. And there you go. Um, and that, basically after kicking that, it, um, that, like, it basically it's like there's an AWS fault, so you have to acknowledge that there's a fault with the system. I believe it's the same as, a, you know, continuous aspect, but you uh, just have to uh, put the brakes on and go from there. So what I'll do is I'm just going to put step two brake on because I can just sight the station there. Just let that speed wash off, get us down to 15 as we... You see, if we're stopping at that station, we're probably coming at about a nice pace, actually. I 
and go to step one. Break off. Single warning AWS. Next signal red. And the 15 is actually a crossover signal. If you can just see the sync feed post there. I'll let you guys into a secret. I did actually spad this next signal in the last attempt at a run through of this. But we'll see how it goes. Bit of juice on, keep us moving. Dear train, please rev. There we go. So we've got the W board there. I'll give my beep, but we are coming to a stand as far as I can tell. Seeing if I can sight the signal around the curve. Can't see it to the veg. Yep, you're welcome for that joke. I hope you enjoyed it. And slouch back comfy. But the approach to the signal. You can see, like I say, we've especially with the uh, this with this train, we do have a very limited perspective on the world. There we go. So that signal is still at least a quarter of the aspect. So I'm gonna draw up to it about five miles an hour. Yep, it's a red. So just roll forward, so step one, off, this coast for now. So you can see there is this train ahead of us which is in the Scott Rail, the original Scott Rail livery I should say. That's when Scott Rail was operated by National Express I believe. We've got a Strathclyde, oh, an SVT Rail class 156 in front of us, which is doing a new. Yeah, this, this is the 150s, so this is the old guard, the route. These were retired, uh, it, by, well, they were, were, weren't really taken over to, they weren't, none of them made it into this livery here. So it just shows they didn't really last long at all um, when they first got rail. So they, uh, yeah, and this is Eastfield Depot over here, which is, I've not populated because, lol, we like having frame rates, folks, and unless I'd flown over here, you wouldn't even know that it was empty, so. So what I do is I just stand here and I press stand here signal sent. Oh, it's clear. Well, it's clear to a quarter of the aspect for us. So it says wait, but it's because it doesn't link to that at all. We are on a single amber aspect, clear onto the up main line. So I'm going to just floor us up to fifteen. And break because I overdid it. Probably so slightly. About 14 and a half miles per hour. We've got the uh, FS, the uh, next air train there, so an NX, um, NX X, N yeah, next, first, well, fuck, fuck it, it was called Scott Rail. So we should call it Scott Rail. So yeah, um, if you look over to the side there, it shouldn't have the smoke pouring out the roof. I tried to get rid of the smoke, but it wouldn't. We've got 37197 with uh, the Lancashire Fusilier on the rear going up to Fort William. So it's going the way we've just come. I will actually grab that as a screenshot. I'll put call it a screenshot now. So we are going to. If for some reason we're being taken down this route by the signal. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but hey. Let's take it up to 40, 40 miles per hour. And go from there. Crumbs. Yeah, I dropped the AWS there. Oh well. 
To be honest, I was too busy just saying crumbs like not slowing down in time. So yes, we are against a red signal there. So what I should do is put my reverser to neutral. Put my DR rate on. And we shall circle back once that signal has cleared. Once that signal has cleared. Just like that, folks, our signal has literally just cleared. So uh, we just don't know why I'm, I risked my break there. Um, and away we go. So, yes, the uh, we're just doing the descent now into Glasgow Queen Street. Uh, it looks like we're just being wrong, ring, running in wrong line. Which, to be honest, I, and again, in IRL, I would have stopped, called the signal, queried the route, and then gone from there. But it's it's train sim. We know it's you know we know it hasn't thrown an error, so we know it'll get us there basically. signal ahead of us so I'm going to slow down for that um, I'm just going to put step two brake on get my brake on so as much as I would query the route the, the, you can see the track is bi-directionally bi signaled so yeah So our next sort of point of note is we need to exit the tunnel at 15 miles an hour. So I'm just letting that speed wash off as we go down the hill. Uh, you know, you can see it's a really steep slope. So um, it's one of the things that the, um, you know, getting the 385s in has actually done for Scott Rail. 385s can absolutely rock it up, X, whereas the DMEs just couldn't. Didn't have the torque then. Could walk the walk, couldn't walk, well, so could talk the talk, couldn't walk the walk. Insufficient talk. Actually, no, they could walk the walk, but they couldn't talk the talk. There's your dad joke of the day, folks. That is what you come here for. Unsolicited dad jokes. Let that speed wash off. You can see the 15 posts. We are basically like it wouldn't kill me to let the speed increase slightly, but I shouldn't, so I won't. So this train will probably be well. I'm going to be just dropping it off here at Queen Street and heading for my break. But I'll probably be heading off to the train itself. Will probably head off to uh, Eastfield Depot for servicing and a bit of tender loving care from the fitters who will sort it out with everything it needs to continue its, its work this afternoon. Of course, we are arriving at about 10 past 3, but the day is but young. Like I say, servicing one of these does not take that long. Once it's serviced, it can go back out there and kick some butt bot, kick some butt bot. Stop one. Step two break. Glasgow Queen Street itself has been fully redesigned or fully refurbished since this, this was last seen. So, for example, you can actually see straight out into the the square of Gla Glasgow now. I've got, I don't no idea what it's called, but you can see out into it, which is always nice. Like I say, it's just very different now, much lighter, much more modern feeling. Definitely a, a, a good refurbishment of uh, Queen Street Station. So we'll uh, reach the doors. 
reverse it off. Yeah, we'll just do register the train. Tail lights, headlights go off. Mock lights go off. There we go, that's the train disposed of. So, um, any who's all. Right, guys, thank you all very much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like the video. Uh, yeah, like I say, see more from me on a semi regular basis. We'll see you next time. So, uh, like, sorry, so see more from me on a semi regular basis. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye bye.